Uh, is that better? Hey. <laughs> hey, huh? OK, so, no. Um, this is Joomla 4 version 3, uh, effectively. Uh, version 1 was a project we called Icarus. Uh, Icarus was um, a, basically a blank page. We opened up a repository, and we asked people to contribute their ideas. Um, the reality was, was some people wanted to start from scratch. Some people wanted to do small little tweaks to the existing system. Some people wanted to change the default value of a parameter. And other people wanted to rebuild on Laravel. Um, as you can imagine, um, it didn't get very far. Um, with so many people looking at so many different things, no code ever got written, most of the issues went dry, and nothing happened. Version 2 was Joomla X. That's uh, still a work in progress. Um, but um, that also turned into a full rewrite of Joomla. Um, the result of that was um, people um, dis uh, decided that with a full rewrite being necessary, their time frame became long. And so um, I took over as the lead of a, uh, a kind of incremental step on Joomla 3, but with BC breaks to try and um, not require large-scale rewrites, allow 1.5 to 1.6, but allow us to make some required changes to um, modernize Joomla. So uh, when I took over on Joomla 4, the first question you have to think about, which stems back to um, what we had in our lunchtime keynote, was what does a CMS do? Who should it be targeting? And how do we make their lives easier? So. I pulled down a couple of definitions from the internet of a CMS, um, which I found kind of quite interesting because they're very inconsistent. Um, these guy, uh, the first definition talks about this kind of concept of a single interface, kind of how Drupal used to be. Uh, I'm not sure if it still has a single interface, whether it's got an admin interface now, but point being, you know. Joomla doesn't have this kind of single interface concept. It has a very clear kind of divide between administrator and site. Um, and in the second definition, um, what's quite interesting is it explicitly mentions this concept of um, targeting people with little knowledge of web programming. Um, but that's not true either. Talk to any Drupal user and tell them they have little knowledge of web programming. Um, you know. So I think it's hard to say. CMS is such an abstract concept. To just say it manages content is pretty much the only true definition you can give. But at the same time, that doesn't help you focus the product necessarily. So I think the conclusion is, is building something for everyone is hard. So the next thing to think about is if you're comparing the three major CMSs, and here I literally Googled WordPress versus Joomla versus Drupal and looked at the first page of results. Because the reality is, is that if you are someone who doesn't really know anything about building websites, and you, you can find these names all over the internet, this is the kind of thing that someone will Google. One of your clients might Google it. And they'll get these results. So, and this kind of quick overview was quite interesting because I had never heard of Joomla as being great for social networking websites before. <laughs> um, yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, it's quite hard to read, so I'm going to read out on the bottom slide, uh, which also talks about social networking. And it also said that it's, um, where is it? While not too technical, Joomla does require some investment to get familiar with the platform. And I think most of us would recognize that. So I think there is a question of, I think Joomla gives people a lot more power than um, WordPress does. Um, it's certainly much easier when you start installing multiple extensions to make extensions play together well. But it's, that comes at a cost of a learning curve. So thinking about Joomla's target market, though, um, this is something that the marketing team has been working on for a while. Um, specifically, Path has been working hard on this. There's various Joomla Magazine's articles he's done. And this is a fairly simplified version 
of what he thinks we should be targeting Joomla at. That doesn't mean that there aren't other interested parties, but this is the first level customers, so to speak, that Joomla should be looking at, which is template developers, extension developers, the two kind of core things you need when you're building a website with Joomla. Because let's be honest, if you're downloading Joomla core out of the box, you're probably better off with WordPress because you're building some sort of very simple kind of blog contact form kind of page. No, it's, it's true. Um, if Joomla's structure is geared around optimizing itself to people who are building, when you, when you start to install a couple of extensions on your site, that's when Joomla really starts to kick in because you've got, um, as Brian pointed out with content menus and stuff, the entire way the back end is built is designed to start allowing multiple extensions to look like they're all part of a single unified interface. Um, so that's kind of extension developers, template developers. And then the people who are building the websites for you because system integrators, consulting agencies, these are people who are building not mass, like not kind of small little blogs, but they're people who are going to be downloading a few extensions and installing a few extensions and trying to make things play together, but are not necessarily building a bespoke custom end-to-end -end product. So in answer to Kevin John's question, and Nick made me quite happy he brought that up actually, why are people using Joomla? Because Joomla has modular functionality that's implemented across extensions and by extensions, i.e your shopping cart systems, your event systems, all that kind of stuff. These are all m modules, things that you can piece together. And it's easy to integrate extensions develop uh, together, which is one of the big problems that WordPress has. If you've ever tried to take two kind of medium-sized WordPress extensions and make them play together, you'll know the pain that you can often get. And that's not that as, you find that increasingly little in Joomla. And we're used by site builders when a highly bespoke project is too expensive, but we're also more than just a blog. If you want to build a blog, there's far better blogging platforms around. You know, Medium or WordPress or whatever else have you, you know, depending on how you're going to build. So in my opinion, this is why people are using Joomla. So bearing that in mind, what should Joomla 4 be looking to achieve? So with the aim of making life easier for extension and template builders, you want to eliminate deprecated code, um, use some of the Joomla framework packages which have better testing so we can try and reduce bugs for extension developers as much as we can. Um, and for people who are building websites, you want to make the admin interface more user friendly, try and reduce the learning curve. You want to improve SEO, we want to improve accessibility. We want to be using the latest versions of things, upgrade our Bootstrap version from Bootstrap 2 to Bootstrap 4. Investigate any performance bottlenecks. If people have built Joomla sites with huge numbers of um, ACL levels and things, you'll know how, uh, how performance quickly goes down the hill. Um, and start thinking about kind of next generation technologies. We've talked already, like, you'll have had all kinds of talks about people talking about web services and how they're the next thing. That's how systems like Alexa and stuff are integrating with your website. If you're gonna start looking by voice search and stuff for a single result, you need to be sure that A, your result is found, and B, that there's a way for Alexa to search your site and find it and get the information off it quickly. So we need to get components ready for that leap because that's not a small step because Joomla is a very HTML page-centric platform at the moment. So the first way we set out to achieve this was to rebuild the plugin system. This, the plugin system is a, one of the big performance bottlenecks in Joomla. Um, it takes time to go through every single plugin in your system and work out what is a plugin. How, well, not what is a plugin, but how do we find these events? How do we look for what the, um, the methods that we're going to trigger when we run a plugin? And um, there are various new ways of doing it. Like the plugin system was great when it came in. It was almost revolutionary to an extent um, in the PHP world. But that was 
in June of 1.5, which was the best part of 15 years ago. The world has moved on, and they found more performant, more efficient ways of doing the same thing. So uh, for those of you who are developers out there, um, and I will go over this relatively fast because I know that that isn't going to be all of the room. We now, rather than looking for public functions in your um, plugin, we now will be explicitly looking for a list of plugin method, uh, plugin event name going to function name. Um, and we will be passing in objects into your plugin to access parameters and set the results rather than um, looking for, um, rather than you manipulating objects that we pass in, sometimes by reference, sometimes not, so often inconsistently. So this also is get, be unifying our five different event-based systems we've got between JTable observers, plugins that you know about, the authorization plugins, which for some reason have their own thing, the capture plugins, which for some other reason have their own thing, and the editor plugins, which also have their own thing. Um, and if anybody wants to explain why to me afterwards, please feel free, because I don't know. <laughs> so, off a more developer-based topic and onto the installer. Joomla's installer is, on, actually on several of the pages I found on Google, noted as something that feels quite clunky. It, you know, WordPress are famed for this, you know, fast one-minute install. And yet, actually, they ask for most of the same information that we ask for. Why is this so complicated for us? Why, why do people feel it's hard to use? And the reason is, is that WordPress, in some cases, asks for less information than we ask for. Um, you know, WordPress don't ask if you want to set your site offline at the start, or if you want to enter a site description, or uh, they don't also show lots of information. You know, why do we show everybody all the PHP configuration settings if there are no errors when we know there aren't any errors because you've got to this place? You know, we'll just show people these issues if they're needed, and if they're not needed, excellent. And then the sample data installation page. Well, if you've just set up your installer in Spanish, why do you need to install English language sample data? You know, and do the users even need to see this in the installation process? Well, no, we can leave it till after the installation progress when we give you the option of multilingual install, and you can either go straight into your backend without sample data, or you can say, I want to install multilingual content, or I can install English content. Much simpler. So we split the installer up into three stages. Stage one, select your language, enter your site name. Stage two, enter your username, email, password. Set up your super user credentials. Stage three, enter your database credentials. Job done, your Joomla site is installed. So by doing that immediately, we hope we have made the installer much easier to use. And hopefully, when people start looking up this WordPress versus Joomla versus Drupal thing in a few years' time, they won't go, oh, the Joomla installer is really clunky and horrible, and WordPress feels much nicer. Because the first thing when people see your site, if, from a site builder perspective, you use Joomla's installer day in, day out. It's maybe not such a big deal. You get used to it. You can adapt to it. But if someone new to Joomla comes along and is trying to work out whether WordPress or Joomla is right for their project, the installer is the first piece of the system that they're going to see. Why should it also be one of the worst parts of user interface in the system? So, talking about the worst parts of the interface in the system, <laughs> media manager. Oh. So, <laughs> um, Alon's team in the corner there have been working on an amazing rebuild of the media manager. Um, we've removed the entire iframe thing and replaced it with a JavaScript powered system. Um, with backend interactions with a REST API. Um, if you click on things, we're not reloading the page every time. When you navigate into folders, we're not reloading the page every time. And additionally, we are allowing you to do things like um, editing content, uh, ed editing images, doing simple image manipulation in the editor as well. Nothing particularly complicated because browser support is relatively limited um, for more complex operations, but 
the opportunities there to do basic cropping and resizing and aspect ratio sizing. Rotation? Yeah, rotation. There you go. Yeah, you can add your own. You can add your own things as well, um, but you have to feel. You have to get a feel about how. You have to make your own decision on browser support. Basically, um, the, the the more browsers that the more browser versions that come out, the more the more things get supported. But also, if you want to, if you're happy to throw away IE support for anybody who wants to edit images, sure, go for it. But we have to set minimum browser versions. Um, and saying we're not going to support any IE versions is probably a step too far still at this stage. Um, if you are interested in working on this project, you can go find Alon in the corner there. Um, the GitHub repo is linked. Um, you can go away, find it, and contribute. Back to a more codey thing. I'm trying to intersperse things so there's a bit of here for everyone. There's a new way of running components. For those of you who have ever used um, FOF, um, you'll know about its dispatcher system. Don't worry, this isn't FOF. Um, cool. um, but we have this new way of triggering components other than your blank entry file, with the idea being that this will help you running components outside of the main context. Um, it will help unit testing components because now everything is injected um, right from your entry point and adding extra, more extra custom load logic in an object-orientated fashion. <sighs> Accessibility. So increasingly, if you're building government-style projects, as Kevin mentioned, you need to build um, websites that are certified accessible to AA standards. Um, any website you build in Israel of any kind requires you to be AA level accessible. And all public websites in uh, public sector websites in Australia, Italy, Netherlands, and an increasingly growing list. Um, there's talk that the EU might implement it across the entire EU in the not too distant future. So Joomla's back end, especially considering not many people are ending up overriding the back end, needs to be a accessible out the box. What about access keys? What do you mean by access keys? No, go for it. Well, what, so the, the question you can hear is that uh, Joomla doesn't allow you to apply the access keys uh, to a menu item. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been in the past some extensions that we do it. Uh, one of the problems, and a lot of accessibility experts are now recommending that you don't do that. And the reason for that is because there's no standards. So on one website, the, the contact page might be, let's say, So our aim is for Joomla 4 to be accessible out of the box to a level of accessibility. Um, we're not there yet, but it is a continuing work in progress. And be sure by the time the final product is shipped, we will be AA compliant. Um, so that means color contrast for visually impaired, tabbing navigation throughout the interface, ensuring all inputs have labels or rear labels or uh, screen reader hidden labels. Um, and there will be a documented standard for extensions as well, which we're putting on um, the docs. This, is, this page is pretty much empty at the moment, but we, there is a um, long document being drafted by the accessibility team. I believe, uh, where is Armin? Yes, accessibility team lead at the back there. Stand up, say hi, yeah. So if anybody wants to help out with that work, Armin is at the back. He has a great team working on things. Feel free to sign up. Next. Who has ever looked at a grid structure like this and tried to make it fit their website? This bootstrap 12 columns or UI kit 10 columns and thought, why is it this complicated? Because uh, all you really want is you want header, 
a body, your sidebar, your footer. And these are blocks. These aren't kind of grids, kind of 12 systems which need to wrap on some screens or anything. Um, and there's a new solution to this. It's built into most browsers by default already called CSS Grid. Um, no need for bootstrap containers. Um, everything is a div at the top level. Uh, this is browser support, by the way. Um, and it's quite an interesting concept because your browser, your um, markup doesn't affect the visual position. Your markup is completely independent of the way things get displayed in the browser. So this actually can give you big accessibility wins as well because you can actually structure your markup the way that, uh, on the, on, in HTML form, in the way that you want your screen readers and your tabs and stuff to work. Not necessarily the way that it's displayed to your user on the screen, although it can be, of course. So how does it work? So imagine you have a page with uh, a basic scoring system. You have a title, scores, some stats, a board with maybe your football scores on or whatever, uh, your, your kind of um, league tables on and stuff, and um, some controls at the bottom. And you want to display a different um, view to people who are on mobile landscapes to portraits because, you know, it's legitimate. Like, People, what works on portrait may not work on landscape, and you're working on devices which have small screens. And to a lot of people, all that means is, is that if your uh, mobile at this orientation is the same width as a tablet, you must treat it like a tablet. But actually, your device is this tool, and the tablet's this tool. Um, and you can use media queries to work this out. And um, what's probably worth pointing out here is, is that the way this is structured is completely dependent on your columns. So you can see title, stats, score, stats, board, board, controls, controls. Whereas in this one, you have title, board, stats, board, score, controls. These map to classes on your divs. So all you need to do is have one div with a class. There's a kind of mapping layer that you define in CSS. And the only thing you need to do to define your uh, grid on various different, um, you know, whatever media queries you want is this. And that is supremely powerful. Um, there is one slight caveat. As I said, you can use your markup is totally independent of the way it looks on the screen. That can be great for accessibility it can also ruin your accessibility. If you imagine, and this is a GIF, on a standard screen width, you tab through, you go one, two, three, four. But now if I change my grid around, you can see that the tabbing order, because my markup is still one, two, three, four, but I've displayed it in a different order, I go one to the bottom, back to the middle, back to the right, back to the bottom. And that can be supremely confusing for users who are, who are forced to use tabbing. So whilst it can be used for good, it can also be used for bad. So be warned. Possibly, but it starts to get confusing. Um, OK. Final thick, quick thing, because I know I'm being hurried. Um, markup is also quite hard sometimes. When you're using Bootstrap, you can end up with these kind of big, complicated divs to try and this is all that this is all the HTML markup required to render a Joomla alert on the screen. So one of the cool things that's coming about at the moment is web components, shadow DOM, having custom blocks of code where everything's kind of hidden away from you. So you can see here we have a Joomla alert. This allows us to display things in far less HTML that you have to write, but you still have full control. Um, opinions on how shadow DOMs work differ quite a bit. I found these two in the top few results on Google. Um, and as you can see, um, browser support is pretty good. Um, not there yet, but um, there is a series of polyfills for very, depending on what browser extensions you want to support. Um, the most popular being something called Polymer which if you use version one, it'll take you all the, give you support all the way back to IE8. Um, not that we will be supporting IE8, but. Um, and the benefits of this is 
um, you encourage modularity of CSS and JavaScript. Um, stuff that's inside a web element is not accessible outside the web element. It's its own thing. Now you can override outside in, but you can't go inside out. So your template style sheet can override all the styling inside, but the styling inside can't affect any other element on the page. So you can combine this with something called Shadow DOM to actually control what the user can and can't override sometimes, which may be advantageous, it might not be, depending on your use cases. Um, and, but it gives a lot more flexibility as well. It, it, just changing Joomla alert to some other kind of alert is a one-line change. But you've completely rebuilt your entire alert system like that. So, um, I found this online, which I thought was a quite cute little concept. Um, it, as you can see, like this is the internals here uh, of a Shadow DOM element, and it can get, start to get complicated quickly to build. Um, and it depends whether you want to start building your own elements or whether, in Joomla, we're gonna look to provide our own elements out of the box. We haven't um, merged it in yet. Um, there's still some discussions to be had on quite how that process is going to work and how we're gonna host docs and stuff because we really don't want to have, be hosting Bootstrap ourselves again or something like that. Um, but this um, gives you flexibility. You, I mean, for example, to use this, all I would do is use a name tag element in my code, and this would all just be done for you as long as you include the custom element. So, I mean, if you're a developer, this is something you should be thinking about. If you're just a site user, ignore. Um, but it is supremely easy to document and use. Again, if you're building with things, for example, this is something that allows you to build tabs like Chrome into your browser. And you can see that it defines exactly what your markup should look like. It tells you what styling overrides it allows. It tells you what uh, JavaScript events it gives, and it gives you any extra API references if you want to do your own thing. And that's all kind of, if you look to the internals, you might freak. Uh, if you're using it as a kind of end user integrator template developer kind of style for thing, it's amazing. So. That's the kind of quick and ugly kind of look over of things. There is a lot of work in progress. You know, we're not even at alpha. Well, we're hopefully going to be releasing our very first alpha in the next week or two. Um, the installer concepts I showed you aren't quite ready to rock and roll in, but as soon as they're in, we're going to be releasing an alpha so you guys can start to have a play and experiment. But it will still be a wildly kind of, this is not some, this is not kind of close to production ready at this stage. This is a, here you go, here's some stuff we're working on, start to give us some feedback. Um, and when I say feedback, I don't mean the kind of feedback that WordPress get in Gutenberg. I'm hoping it's gonna be slightly more constructive feedback like this. Um, but, you know, this is a project that's been uh, six months, 12 months in the works now. And I think there is some really cool features that are being built that have a lot of power and flexibility for you guys and hopefully solve a lot of the pain points that you guys experience in your day-to-day -day lives in Joomla. So with that in mind, other questions? Um, will we be able to assign plugins on pages like modules? No. Plugins are designed, if you want to display things on a page, you use a module. Um, plugins can optionally determine whether they display on a page or not, and you can expose that if you want to the end user, but that's down to a plugin's implementation. That's not, plugins by design are designed to run across all events that get triggered. It's not by design of what plugins are. They're supposed to be, if there is an event, the plugin must subscribe to the event. The plugin can choose not to listen and not do anything and just pass but that's built into the plugin. Um, yeah, so no. When? When? Hey, the question of the hour. Um, 
there's no point uh, there's no point releasing something before it's ready. Um, but at the same time, um, the whole point of this was to produce something sooner rather than later because, you know, to an extent, Gene Rex is doing the later. Um, I was hoping that we might have alpha. Uh, initially, I was aiming for something around JWC, um, which is November this year. Um, but being practical, it's probably not, it's not going quite as fast as I was hoping. Um, hard to say. I mean, alpha soon, uh, once B, uh, GSOC projects come back in, it will reevaluate probably tags and betas, and then it just takes as long as it takes to get stable. Late this year, early next year's best guess, but it really is best guess. I mean, at the end of the day, everybody's volunteers and people, you know, if pe someone vanishes off for a month, you know. But yeah, hopefully. Yes? What do you mean for current websites? Sure. Uh, so the question was for current websites. So for current websites, um, one of the things that I didn't have time to show is we're looking at building into the Joomla that wrapped data um, a way to check uh, extension compatibility. At the end of the day, we, we have deliberately designed it so that there are minimum changes necessary for extensions. The biggest extension change at the moment is upgrading the extension markup from Bootstrap 2 to Bootstrap 4. Honestly, there are some extensions that you can install right now that are Joomla 3 on Joomla 4, and most of them, no, okay, most of them is an exaggeration, but some of them that aren't using kind of deprecated code, like code that's been assigned to the bin ages ago, actually install just fine. They look awful because they're not Bootstrap 4 styled, but they do install and work. Um, the majority of extensions I've installed, I can get working in half an hour to an hour. Um, of course, getting the extension developers to make that upgrade is not something that I'm in control of, but we've deliberately tried to make it as easy as possible. Um, and it's the usual thing. If Joomla can make it one click, but it's dependent on your templates and your extensions and all the usual caveats, um, there's only so much we can do. We can make it easy for extension developers. We can make it easier for template developers, but we can only lead the horse to water. I really hope not. If, I, if not, you know, if not, Rowan knows where I live and she'll come and find my head. Good point. Any more questions? Ah, shit. George, thank you very much. Thank you.